Welcome to video number nine. This is the final video. That means that by now you will have a sound understanding of what the exam is all about. You have learned about the history of ESG, the emerging regulations, each of the individual factors, E, S, and G, um, about stewardship and engagement. Um, you have taken the analyst's view when ev evaluating a specific uh, stock from its ESG risk and then the PM's view to integrate it into this portfolio. And now we're going to look through the lenses of an asset owner. So what is the message? Remember the two A's from earlier, accountability and alignment. This chapter opens with a detailed description of, of uh, the agency problem in asset management. Actually, if we look at the entire value chain, it's a double agency problem. Management to shareholder, and shareholders are often asset managers, so managers to the end clients, like for instance pension funds. So you have, you've got two uh, agency problems in, embedded there. There are some core tenets um, you need to understand. You need to, you know, the, the core tenets are clarifying client needs, which is defining the ESG investment strategy, then fully aligning investment with client, uh, client ESG beliefs, tailoring ESG investment approach to client expectations, holding managers to account. The chapter then walks you through each of these steps in full detail. For instance, you will be introduced to the, pension, uh, to the Pensions and Lifetime Savings Association, short PSLA, which produces a stewardship, uh, stewardship checklist, which is a useful guide to defining ESG investment strategy. In the second step, fully aligning the investment with the client's ESG beliefs. We try to understand questions like, is ESG a risk management tool or a source of investment advantage? Which aspects of ESG most matter from the perspective of the asset owner? It may be more focused on climate issues or maybe more on human rights issues and so on. Once that is clarified, we can start developing uh, client-related ESG-aware investment mandates and the uh, International Corporate Governance Network, ICGN, um, has developed the uh, ICGN model contract terms between asset owners and managers, which is a helpful framework and proposes best practices for ESG-aware investment mandates around the monitoring and use of ESG factors, the integration of ESG factors into investment decision-making, adherence to good practices around stewardship, and voting and reporting requirements. You will be given, again, a list of all possible invest ESG investment approaches like ESG integration, exclusion, best in class, and so on. You know, these uh, investment approaches, ESG investment approaches, they keep coming up from, you know, in the, in the various chapters. Um, so, you know, this, this is going to be a repetition, but make sure to really read them as well even if you have already heard about them. You will also be introduced to the manager selection process. This is new. Again, you're, you are an asset owner. Um, and the manager selection process is, um, you know, the RFP and due diligence process an asset owner applies when hiring a manager. And what sort of questions uh, need to be asked to a manager with regards to ESG stewardship and engagement. Stewardship and voting are addressed in this chapter as well, specifically the questions of who does the work, given that it is a very resource intense, um, very resource intensive. Do, do, they, uh, do they have in-house specialists for stewardship? Do they, have, uh, do they outsource it? Does, does, does the PM do the work? Um, then next, you will be given an overview of all investor types. Uh, pension funds, insurance companies, individual investors, and see how their time horizon links to their inve ESG investment goals. And then lastly, um, the chapter provides an overview of how managers should be held accountable, both in terms of how to conduct the review meeting and what sort of questions to ask and what to expect in terms of measurement and reporting. So... We haven't seen this slide in a while. This is the five most important topics. For this chapter, we actually did one um, because it's a shorter, uh, shorter kind of uh, chapter. 
Uh, but again, even if we have five topics that we say are the most important ones, we really encourage you to read the entire curriculum. But uh, if we had to boil it down to five topics, it would be the PSLA stewardship checklist, then the RFP due diligence and manager selection process, the investor types, again, and their investment uh, time horizon and ESG expectations, monitoring and challenging asset managers, and finally, uh, reporting and measurement of their ESG uh, integration.